Hello, I'm Tiffany, and you know me as Ty Inspire. Now I believe I can be all I dream. The connection to destiny is me. Over 400 years ago, my ancestors were violently removed from their homes on the continent of Africa. Since I set foot on this continent, there is a connection and a peace that completes this journey home. So now it's time to go to work. Now it's time to bring everything together. This is where it began and this is where it must end in Africa. her teaching us songs that she learned in the local language um, and we were just like wow like this is so great it was it was just so different for us you know and that is when I fell in love with Africa that's when I knew at some point in my adult life I had to come to the continent now at that point I didn't know anything about purpose of course I didn't know anything about um, what I was really supposed to be here for, or what I was supposed to do, but I just knew I just had this love for the continent. And I've always had, I think, a love for culture. So that also played a big part in why I fell in love with it. Because, mainly because the president was giving speeches and telling people of African descent or of the diaspora to come home. And so I was like, wow, really? Like, he's like, you can come and you can stay. And, you know, I'm like, wow, like, okay, then I'm going to Ghana. And so, you know, I always knew I wanted to come. To Africa I didn't know where I would come and I honestly didn't even like prepare in advance to where I wanted to go it's just that when I heard that welcome that's when I said okay this must be the first place that I should go and I should start um, I, I have been to Seychelles but to be mainland you know Africa this is my first country and um, I fell in love. I fell in love with God as soon as I came here. I fell in love. Yeah. Going to the slave castles slash dungeons was definitely a very humbling experience. 
it was also a very emotional experience and it was a very enlightening experience for me. I think that everybody's experience is different. Um, I will say, I think it's safe to say that we all share the emotional part, you know. Um, I think that you all have seen it too with people who have visited those, uh, especially African Americans that have visited you know there is this immediate emotional connection and I guess of course that's natural and I expected to feel that you know but I didn't expect to feel what I felt it was way beyond that honestly something that I really can't completely explain I don't exactly know how to really explain it the feeling that I had but it was heavy you could there, there were two castles, of course, Elmina and Cape Coast, sorry. So I visited them both, but I had the deepest connection in Elmina, okay, with that castle. I don't know, it's just something about that one. I could feel the spirits. I could feel them there. I could feel um, just the, the, I could feel everything. It was, it was a very sensitive, and that's why I said in the beginning that it was humbling, because, yeah, I think that's one word that I would use to describe it, just being humbling, like, wow, like, I can't even believe that I'm here, and that I'm walking along this same road, and along the same path that some of my ancestors did. Um, but I couldn't even speak. I actually did a video on my experience there, like when I was there I did some video, but it was very little because I really, I just did not have words, I couldn't speak. <laughs> I was very quiet and um, heavy, yeah, a very heavy experience and just thinking about it, <laughs> it's making me a bit emotional too now. But when I say enlightening, it was enlightening for me because I was able to connect with the place and I think with my ancestors. And I, that is when I knew what my purpose was. Being here in Ghana in particular and also being on the continent. Um, I just want to make my ancestors proud, you know? And that was one thing that I just kind of discussed with them. You know, at that point, just, I'm back. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm here. You know, me physically, I was never here, here. But through them, I was. And so, I'm back. And I'm going to complete what I think needs to be uh, completed for us as a, you know, black people, as a race and Africans, you know, as the, you know, culture, you know, the African culture and everything, just keeping that, trying my best to do what I can to keep that intact. between African Americans and Africans in general. Ghanaians because I'm in Ghana, um, but there are other Africans in Ghana too. So bridging that gap, just creating opportunities and spaces for us to come together and unify. Um, whether it's doing a project, whether it's just socially, whatever just bridging that gap and bringing us together because the only way that we're really gonna be able to move forward the way that I think we can is by unifying. And I know a lot of people say this too and they agree with this and that is also their goal. Um, we need to just keep fighting for it and we need to keep striving for it because it can happen. And um, it only takes one, there's power in one, I believe that. 
We just need to keep working towards that goal to unify us because we need to be unified again. We were torn apart when we were violently taken from our homes, but now we have an opportunity to change, you know, that narrative. We can, we can be better and we can do better. So that is my first purpose, is to do that, is to be an activist in doing that here. The second thing is what I'm really doing through my NGO. And so it is to help to um, support and to change the mindsets of people here, in particular children, because I think that they're our future. So we might as well go ahead and start with them in embedding in them some different ideas, some different resources and opportunities and um, encouraging them and inspiring them to shoot for maybe even you know more than they thought that they could like just really just go out there and give it their all nothing is impossible and so that is one of the things that I want to do through my NGO which is the Chalk Work Project Africa and we provide youth programming and through the youth programming um, those are the things that we're going to be working on self-esteem um, giving resources and inspiration to those who are graduating from uh, GHS I believe it is and going into you know the college um, you know so we have several programs that support that and then we also have programs that support material things for schools, particularly in villages. And then we have a program that supports teachers because we need help. So we have to empower and inspire each other so that we can work together and then we can get to the children who are gonna take the torch from us. So um, we wanna make sure that our teachers here feel supported. So it's not about uh, giving them training because they're not trained. No, um, it's about providing ongoing training and ongoing professional development. Yes, that's one thing that I see lacking here. As a teacher in the U.S., um, we constantly have professional development. We're constantly going and, and learning more and making ourselves better. And my God, was it just refreshing to be able to have that and to do that and then come back and give to my students because I was better, you know, and I learned something that I didn't know. So that is what that program is about. Um, and we're here to help. Me and my team, we're here to help and to not just help everybody here, but help ourselves too, because we benefit greatly from giving in this way just i'm talking about personal growth and i'm talking about us being able to you know show love and give love in this way that's how we benefit you know um so it's a win-win for everyone and i'm excited about the project and what it's going to do for the continent now and in the future Give your service, but whatever you can do, do it. 
just don't ignore it. <laughs> like the time is up for us to just act like, oh, that's their problem. Oh, it's Africa. It's, you know, we over here doing our thing. But it's time for us to know that no matter how young, how old you are, what your situation is, you can do something to create this unity that we need. And um, I think that those in the diaspora have a wonderful, um, I'm trying to think of a word, it's just we have an opportunity to bring so much, to bring our experiences, our resources, and you know, just our desire to help and to want more for everybody. So I think that we are a very important key to the whole puzzle. So everybody plays a part. So, you know, I just want to encourage people to do that. Um, I'm a world traveler. Although Africa is dear in my heart and it always will be, um, the world is dear in my heart as well. And I want to help people of all races and all kinds in many ways. So my purpose is, um, is beyond just Africa. But it definitely, at this point in my life, this is my focus. And I think that Africa will always be my number one focus. Although I will always travel the world. I will always visit different places and make connections with people everywhere and give. But Africa will always be my focus and it will be number one. So I hope that um, everybody will join me in doing that. Because I love it here. I love Ghana. And... Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna do this no matter what, no matter what obstacles I have or difficulties I have. I'm gonna continue to fight and do what I can. And so that's the best that I can do. Yeah.